going to be palpating rhomboid major and minor. So I'm going to start off by finding the spinous process of cervical 7. So instead of counting all the way down, I'm going to be looking for the cervical prominence in the back of the neck. Cervicals number 7, spinous process, and thoracic 1 are often the two spinous processes that push out the most. Once I've landmarked what I believe to be that cervical 7 and thoracic 1, I often place two fingertips over top of each one and passively rotate the neck. And I can feel underneath my index finger here, this vertebrae is moving a little bit more, which is helping me indicate that this is the cervical 7. So our muscle rhomboid minor is going to be originating off the spinous process of cervical 7 and thoracic 1. So I'm going to put two fingers indicating those two. And then rhomboid major is going to be originating off thoracic 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you basically have two parts minor and four parts rhomboid major. So our origin for rhomboid major and minor are along here on the spinous processes and not on the most external part, more on the lateral aspect, kind of towards the lamina on the spinous processes. The muscle fibers are going to run inferior and lateral, like so. And the beginning of the fibers for minor are going to be attaching at what is called the root of the spine of the scapula, which is basically where our medial border meets the spine. So the beginning of that spine of the scapula, some texts will also call this the medial angle of the scapula. So rhomboid minor travels this direction. And then from that root all the way down to the inferior angle, is the attachment for rhomboid major. So again, from thoracic 2 to 5, towards the root, all the way down to the inferior angle, making us a much wider muscle for rhomboid major. In some cases, you can cross fiber right away if that individual has a tight rhomboid. So on our body's case right now, I can feel quite a few strands running in this direction, so I'm cross-fibering, but otherwise I'm going to ask for a small amount of scapular retraction. Good, so what he's done basically is he's elevated his scapula up off the table, just clearing the shoulder off the table. You don't want an extremely tight contraction, because then obviously you're going to get covered up by trapezius as well. You will feel trapezius contract with this. However, just starting to engage that muscle, good. I'm feeling those deeper fibers tighten up. Thing to remember that our lower trapezius fibers are running in this direction versus the rhomboid fibers, which are deep to them, are almost running exactly opposite. So you will be able to cross fiber rhomboids while you're going with the fiber direction of trapezius, which may help you differentiate which fibers are which. Lastly, discussing kind of the actions of rhomboid major and minor, they work as a group. And so again, because of our fiber direction, their primary action is going to be retraction, bringing this together. But because they slightly go from superior to inferior, there's also a little bit of elevation, and because they're trying to bring this medial border closer to the spine, they actually end up doing an amount of downward rotation. So those three actions are going to be elevation, retraction, and downward rotation of the scapulothoracic joint. That's going to be concluding our palpation of rhomboids.